So to continue our heap presentation, uh, I'm going to talk about building a heap by just inserting a bunch of values into it one after another. Now this presentation is a bit different than the book. The book never talks about this, but I found that uh, students naturally try to do this. So the book actually presents, uh, presents this in a different way. And we'll get to the book's presentation, but I'm going to first start by just talking about what happens if I just want to insert a bunch of values into a previously non-existing heap. So I have this array of values. Uh, I'm going to insert them into a, a max heap. And so, uh, so I go on, I insert the 13, it looks good. I insert the 14, I know where it goes. Uh, it's bigger than its parent, so it swaps with its parent, now it's the root, it's good. I insert the 15, again it's bigger than its parent, it swaps with its parent, you know, compares with its parent, swaps, now it's the root, it's good. Now I compare an 18, now in this case, uh, 18 is bigger than 13, it moves up. 18 is bigger than 15, it moves up again. Now it's the root, it's fine. Next I insert 11. In this case, 11 is not bigger than 15, so it just stops, it doesn't have to move up at all. Then we go to 12. 12 is smaller than 14, so it doesn't have to move up at all. 17 is bigger than 14, it compares against 14, moves up. 17 compares about 18, its parent, it's smaller than its parent, so it stops. And then I inserted 16, 16 moves up for a while, and finally 16 compares against 18 and is smaller, so it stops. There you go. There is a heap. <clears throat> All right. There's no real problems with building a heap this way. It's a little bit less efficient than the method shown in the book. Uh, we'll come back to that. But it seems to be that students understand inserting into a heap really nicely. Uh, and so they want to just use that insertion to build a heap. And if you do that, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Now, the book never talks about building a heap this way. And in fact, they talk about building a heap uh, before they even talk about inserting into a heap. Okay. For this method, hey, we do n total insertions. For sure, each one is no worse than log n. You know, right? An insertion on a heap with n values takes no more than log n time. Uh, so worst case is no more worse than n log n. Additionally, for the last half of the insertions, each can take up to time log n over 2 or log n minus 1. So for n over, well, that gives us a worst case time that actually is lower bounded by order n log n. So our worst case time for iteration, iterated insertion to build a heap is n log n. All right. Now, what the linear time build heap takes advantage of is, um, it sort of takes advantage of, if you look at these, say, the last half of the nodes, you could imagine that each of them is perfectly good as a little heap in and of itself. So, hey, 16 is a heap, it's fine, it's a little tiny heap, 12 and 17 are each heaps, and 11 is a heap. And only when I actually start looking at something that's the parent of something else, like this 18 is the parent of 16, do I have to worry about 18 not being the root of a valid heap? So we're going to step back through the nodes, sort of from the bottom up, back through the nodes, and, in che and check for each node, is it the parent of a valid, is it the root of a valid heap? So in this case, 18 is has 16 as a child, 18 is bigger than 16, that looks like a valid heap. Stepping back through the indices, 15 is the parent of 12 and 17. We know inductively 12 and 17 must already be the roots of valid heaps, so is 15 uh, valid in compared, compared to them as a, as a root of a max heap? Now this looks well, it sort of just looks like when we had this, this, well, we used the max heapify when we did delete. And we had a node that maybe had to move down. So in this case, maybe this 15 has to move down. We compare 15 against 12, it's bigger. We then compare 15 against 17, it's smaller, and so it has to move down. And it moves down, and in this case, there's nowhere further to move. You know, sometimes maybe it has to move more than one level, but in this case now it's a leaf and it's good. So that's now a valid heap. So now we move on to our next node. Is 14 the root of a valid heap? 
Well, compare against its left child. Oh, the left child is bigger. So now compare 18 against 11. 18 is bigger, so 14 will swap with the larger of its children. And now, maybe 14 keeps moving down. 14 compares to 16. It is, in fact, smaller, so it swaps. And now we have a valid heap. Okay. And finally, we get to, in this case, the root, 13. 13 compares against 18. It's smaller. 18 compares against 17. 18 is bigger. 13 moves down. 13 compares against 16. 16 compares against 11. 13 is smaller. 13 compares against 14, it's smaller. And now we have a valid heap. Okay. So let's compare, let's compare the heap that we've built here against the heap that we built to begin with, right? Let's see, uh, 14 thirds. So this one on the right is the second heap we built. The one on the left is the heap we built through iterated insertion. We see they are two different heaps. Okay, but they're both valid heaps. Of course, they have the same shape because they have the same number of nodes. Uh, of course, they have the same root because there's only one max value, and in, in this case, and it's 18. But we see, uh, we see, you know, the order of the leaves are a little different. In this case, well, they're almost the same, but uh, 14 and 15 are in different places. Okay, so heaps don't have to be the same. What's our runtime analysis for this? Well, half the nodes, which are leaves, we get to skip completely. Now, a quarter of the nodes, those that are sort of parents of a leaf, can move down one level. An eighth of the nodes, that is grandparents of leaves, can move down at least most two levels. And the great grandparents, uh, which is uh, and over 16 of them, can move down three levels. Um, Basically what happens here is in the original iterated insertion, if you look at the final heap and you consider the sum of the depths of the nodes, that's the worst case runtime of the iterated build heap. And that was n log n. Here, instead of considering the sum of depths, we actually consider the sum of the heights of the nodes. So like this 14 has height one, whatever value starts there can move down one. The 16 has height two, whatever starts there can move down two. The 18 has height three. Whatever starts there can move down three. So instead of considering the sum of the depths of the nodes, where most of the nodes in this tree are deep, we consider the sum of the heights of the nodes, where really only like the root is really high and its children are pretty high, okay? This gives something like, you know, the sum of the heights of the trees where there are n over two to the h plus one nodes that are at height h. Uh, and then we want to work that out. So the book probably works that out to give us that it's order n um, worst case runtime. Of course, the book, in order to do that, the book uses magic. No, no, uh, that's probably not right. The book probably uses calculation, calculus, or I don't, the book's clever, right? However, we can be a little bit more clever. We can actually get an argument that it's order n time without having to worry about that nasty looking summation, right? So this is what we're gonna say. Consider the leaves, okay? Every node that's higher than the leaf is a possible candidate node to make a leaf move up at some point in time. But, of course, half the nodes are leaves. There are only something like n over two nodes that aren't leaves, and each of them can cause a leaf at some point in time to move up. Something that's in a position of a leaf can be moved up at some point in time because each of the n over two non-leaves that start. But if something starts as a non-leaf, of course, it can only make one leaf move up. It can't sort of hit one leaf and then hit another leaf from that. So whatever node started in 18 will eventually perhaps move down to a leaf, but it won't move down to two leaves, right? When you're considering it as the root of a heap, okay? Similarly, for the leaf grandparents, there are only n over four of them, okay? Oh, sorry, for the leaf parents, for the n over two nodes which are leaf parents, there are only, sorry, let me try that one more time. For the n over four leaf parents, 
there are only like n over 4 leaves which start nodes which start higher than them and each of those n over 4 nodes can cause exactly one leaf parent to move up when it is being considered as the root of a tree so like 14 can be moved up by whatever starts in the position of 16 whatever starts in the position of 18 um, 17 is also a, a leaf parent. It can be moved up by whatever starts in the position at 18 here. But whatever starts in 18 can only move up either 14 or 17 when it's, it can only take one of those two, two places. So if you consider all of the things which are, you know, above a parent of a leaf, and there are n over 4 of them, each of them can make only one parent of a leaf move up. So that counts for another n over 4 positions. We can sort of sum this. We got n over 2 leaves can each be moved up by something like n over 2 of the nodes. n over 4 leaf parents can be each moved up by only n over 4 of the nodes above them total. And, uh, you know, n over 8 of the leaf grandparents can be moved up by the n over 8 nodes that start as parents of leaf or, or higher of leaf grandparents. And we sum that up n over 2 plus n over 4 plus n over 8. This tells us that in the total build time for the heap, at most n things move up total. So there are at most n total things moving down, n total swaps, and we get linear time. Now this analysis is similar to the uh, incrementing of a binary odometer analysis, which is in the textbook, but uh, I've never actually seen that analysis applied to a heap. Probably it's out there somewhere, but anyway, you can basically take that same analysis you should be able to, it's the same equations. Take that same analysis and use it on a similar argument for building a heap, and it gives us a linear time of, uh, for this build heap operation, which is done by sort of n over two calls to the uh, max heapify.